Hello and welcome back to Wonderland Asylum. Uh, what am I doing today? Well, today's where I reveal what I'm doing with that blue hose. Uh, yep, what I'm doing with it, some of you may have guessed, some of you may not, is I'm going to be installing a trio of gauges on top of my dashboard. Now, the reason for this, I'll talk a wee bit about my motivation and everything, because I'm by no means a racing driver and this is by no means a racing car. But uh, when I replace the stereo, the only clock that's in the vehicle is, if I show you, it's in where the stock stereo is, down there, it's not very clear. And then when I put the new stereo in, which is now hanging down there, I'll get round to as why that's down there shortly. But there's no clock at all now anywhere, which isn't really very helpful. So I wanted a clock and I didn't want one that was battery powered or one that was stuck higgledy piggledy somewhere and just didn't just didn't fit the rest of the car. Uh, I wanted something that was clean, something that that looked well, and that I wouldn't have to keep pulling off to change batteries, etc. And something that lit up and would turn off on and on on and off with the car. So I found one online. It's a digital two-inch uh, gauge clock, twenty-four hour clock, uh, but I couldn't find at a reasonable price anyway, or a single bezel uh, mounting pod, or at least one that looked any good. The best I could find was either two or three. So I thought because it had issues with the, the alternator previously, it wasn't charging properly so it had to be replaced, I thought, well, I'll get a voltage gauge as well. And I thought, well, why not go all out and buy a boost gauge? And then what I can do is I can deactivate the tuning box that's underneath the the bonnet if you remember the last the one of my video, last videos I installed a tuning box underneath so what I can actually do is for scientific purposes obviously take the tuning box out or find a way to to turn it off I'm sure you can turn it off and run the boost gauge with no tuning box and then I'll run it with the tuning box to see if or if any difference the tuning box actually makes to the boost I know it feels different when you're driving, but how much of that's a placebo effect, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so, without further ado, the only thing I'm actually in the car to do is to take the dash out. I'm going to take it inside the house because I need to mount the pod in it. So I'll put you down where you can see, and that's my favourite phrase, isn't it? I'll put, it, I'll put you down where you can see, and we'll get started. So, again, this wee spot here seems to work pretty well. Um, for those of you who haven't, well, you've seen the introduction, what you're actually sitting on is my little girl's Batman seat. So I hope you you feel honoured uh, that she allows you to sit in her chair. So, yep, as I say, all you need to do is that front fascia comes off. I've shown you how to do that in previous videos. Knobs come off. Here, uh, power window control comes off. Screw comes out of there. Two screws out of there. And the two uh, pillar covers come off. And then pull the dash and she slides right out and uh, she goes back in equally easily. I've tested that to make sure I can get her back in. There you go, the dashboard clips in and out just that easily. Uh, no drama, no hassle, no fuss. And then again, just put the screws back in. I'll show you how to put it all back together once I've put the gauges and everything in. What I'm gonna be doing is the gauge pod, I'll pick you up so you can see a bit better, is gonna sit there. So it's gonna be three gauges. Now because it's curved, there it's sort of beveled. I'll need to make a cut along there. Uh, I'll just use a small rotary tool to make a cut to fit it in and obviously need to make a wee cut, either drill a hole or cut a square or something in there to run the wires through and obviously as I say that's where my blue hose is going. Uh, so that's it, the dash is out. I'm not going to film myself carrying it like an Egypt up to the house because the dogs in the garden will probably trip me up. So I will see you shortly where we'll start putting the gauges together and wiring stuff up. Mm. Hello and welcome back. Uh, we're inside the house now. I've got the dashboard on the ground. Um, so without further ado, I'll put you somewhere where you can see and uh, I'll kind of talk you through what's going to be happening now. Okay. Looks good to me. Now this is the pod I've got to fit the gauges in. So say I'm going to run the boost gauge there, the clock in the middle, and the voltage gauge there. What I've done is I've marked a small line in the dash, because if you look, 
wobbles from side to side, so I've marked a small line where I'm going to use my rotary tool to just cut a line across. I may need to sand it out a little bit because if you see it's got quite a thick lip on it. Depending how wide it cuts, if it doesn't cut wide enough, I may sand that off with the sanding tool just to get it to slip down in there a little better. Uh, I've got a couple of self-tapping screws to attach that to the dash itself. And what I think I'm going to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to wire all the power wires together and solder them in using the soldering iron. And then I'm going to wire all the grounds together and put them on a suitable ground strap. Now I found a wee hole just behind the radio that I'm going to use this screw. And what I'm going to do is, as I say, I've got a big box of wire terminals. And I'm going to pick one of these that fit around this screw and I'm going to use that as my ground. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. So I finished cutting the wee slot and I put a big hole just for the, the wiring and everything to go through. Everything fits together so it's now a case of wiring it all up. I'll put you down again where you can see and I'll go forward with that. See, you can see there where I've put a slit for the, the pod to sit down onto. So it sits flush and it sits quite nicely and I've also put a nice wee hole there for the wires and for the vacuum hose to come through to connect to the boost gauge. So the next bit is to unbox all my gauges. I'll turn you around so you can see. As I say, this one's the clock. It comes with a bracket in case you're mounting the dash. It also comes with a vacuum line for no apparent reason. And a load of stickers. Right, okay, so I'm assuming I need to push it out the front of the box. There we go. And it has a wiring loom that comes out. The Red, orange and yellow wires, hold on, I'll check what they are. Yep, yellow, red and orange are all battery positive, that's fine. So red, yellow and orange. I'll go to the battery positive terminal. So those three can get put together. I might even get a wee bit of tape to just hold them together just now because I'm going to be putting all the power wires and everything together from all the three of them. And the same, the ground is obviously the ground. The orange one, I believe it is, yeah, the orange one's optional. So if you want, you can connect that to a dimmer so that when you turn your headlights on, the clock will get dimmer. I don't really want it to, so, yeah. And unfortunately, the way to set the clock is on the back of it. So I don't see how you're meant to do that once it's all on the dashboard and everything, but I didn't design it, so, yeah. Okay. So I'll do all that once it's in the, the pod. So there's this one, I believe, is the boost. Gauge. Yeah, it comes with its own vacuum hose, but it's not long enough, so I had to buy my own. That's where that's why the blue one's there. Yeah, this also has a bracket attached to it that's not going to be needed because, as far as I'm aware, they should fit fairly snugly. But I'll just push them in just to make sure. And I'm assuming the voltage gauge is going to be much the same. Yeah, yellow for power, black for ground. So again, it's just going to be the same process. Just push this one out. And again, I need to make sure I set, I set it so I can get the wire for the, the vacuum hose in and onto the little 
little bit at the back there. Uh, as I say, the yellow wire will just get tangled in with those ones. Oh dear, it's not very, not got a lot of wire to play with. So yep, just twist that in with the other ones. Same with the ground. It's just going to get twisted in with the grounds from all the rest once I get them in there. And I'm going to test fit it. See how it looks. The boost gauge is going on this side because that's where the vacuum hose is. Pure line sim plate, it's closest to this bit. So thread the wires through, pull it in. Does it sit snug? Not particularly, so I think the bracket's probably a good idea. Okay. see how the bracket works. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to put the brackets back on them once they're in the, the slots. I'll put all these in and I'll come back to when I'm ready to do the wiring. Because I get the impression this is just going to be a lot of me fiddling about to make sure these are all mounted properly. So I'll see, that's how the boost gauge sits. And as I say, the, there are a couple of washers that go in the back for the bracket. A flat washer, a spring washer, and then there's a nut that goes on to just tighten it all up. And make sure your gauge doesn't fall out. Didn't know if I would need them. As I say, the only the person whose video I'm relying heavily on for advice here, his pod must have been slightly better because it it worked perfectly without any sort of brackets or anything on the back but uh, obviously my pod's not as not snug so that's fine, at least they gave you the brackets um, for each of the, the gauges so I'll get this one mounted in the pod, I'll show you what it looks like and then I'll just do the rest of them off camera and you're just going to have to take my word that they're all and see, there you go, that's the boost gauge, it looks lovely, and again, just make sure, yeah, the wires will post down there, lovely. And, oh, when it sits on it looks brilliant. Right, okay, so I'll get these done and I'll come back to you soon. Okay, so we're back, got everything all mounted, and what I've done is I've put all the power wires together, and all the grounds together. And the next thing to do is I'm going to solder all the power wires, because the wires aren't long enough to reach where I need them to go. I'm going to solder the power wires into this red wire here. And then use a bit of heat shrink to join them together. And I'm going to do the same with the ground. So I've got my solder, I've got my solder and iron. Let's get on with it. I can get the lid off the solder. <laughs> oh, it's going to say now that's just embarrassing. Oh dear. And then once I've done all this, I do have a battery pack behind me there. This is my dining room, but yeah, you know, car parts, dining rooms, it's all good. So now what you do is just. Make sure you're getting a good connection between all the, the wires. Get I'll move you so you can see what I'm doing. I am by no means a professional at this, by the way. Uh, this is my first real kind of wiring thing since God, since I did electronics at university. Go. Let's make sure that's good before I go any further. 
Yep, that looks good to me. I'll give it a moment or so to just cool off. And then I'll run the heat shrink. Don't worry about that noise, that's just the, the solder now I'm sliding down in its holder. So see, this is quite a long wire because it needs to run all the way from the middle of the dash to the fuse box uh, where I was working the other day. Okay, so there we go, a little bit of heat shrink over there. I can now move this further up because, yep, yeah, that'll protect that solder. Now, you can use a heat lamp, you can use a gun. Me, I'm using a flexible kitchen candle light, lighter thing. Just make sure you've got the safety off. Safety's always on because I have a little one running around. And just let the fire do the work. And it'll shrink down nicely, giving you a good, strong, safe connection. And just one more to go. That's my ground wire. It's not just as long uh, because it doesn't run as far. It's, as I say, it's running down to behind the stereo. Same idea though. Wrap it round the other wires. Make sure there's a nice, good connection. Then get soldering iron again and the solder. Ooh, solder iron stretching a wee bit there. Basically what your solder here is doing is it's making sure that the, the connection is good and strong and not going to just pop apart. There's too many, like if you go to certain places, I'm not saying everyone, but if you go to certain places what you'll probably get is a twist and tape effort. Okay, now that's done, I'll go and get the heat shrink and and put all this together. So see there's a couple of you guys I watch on YouTube and they they work out of garages and that's aftermarket stuff they hate when people don't even try to put it together properly. It's all twisted and taped and this, that and the other. So I do my very, very best to make sure I never just twist and tape. As I say this is my Aside from, well there's another video, it's not out yet because there's one final bit I need to do for it, but when it comes out you'll see what I mean. And again, just get the flame and heat shrink it all over. And that's us, we've got plenty of wire. The other difference with the ground wire, and I suspect I've actually got a bit too much wire there, more than I need certainly. Okay. Here's the ground wire. Now what I'm doing with that is, yeah I've got a bit too much, so what I can do is bend it over, twist it into a nice solid little pigtail almost, and it's going into this, because this will go around the screw, I don't know if you can see, yeah, that's going to go around the screw that I'm using to ground it. And again, I've got my crimp connecting tool here, and I'm crimp connecting tool at the moment. So put it over there like that and give it a nice tight squeeze because you do not want your crimp connector falling off. There we go, that's all good. All good in the hood. Okay. That's us all ready to go and put it in the car. Now what I'm going to do however is I'm going to give him a quick test boot up, if you guys are all ready for that. First, clean my solder and iron on the little mat. Because if you leave solder on your iron, it ruins it. Again, I don't know if that's true or if that's just what my technical teacher told me at school, so we would all clean the solder and irons. But from what I remember about high school electronics, it was largely just the wee bams in the class 
making huge balls of solder and pinging them at each other. So learning wasn't a bit on the agenda. Okay, okay. So there we have the gauges all mounted, all ready to go. They only go into the dash, but unfortunately I do need to set the clock before I can put them anywhere because once I mount it to the dash, I won't be able to get access to the clock. Now, I imagine once you cut the power to it, the clock doesn't reset, or it does, it resets. I would hope it saves it, but I can't guarantee that. So we will see. So what I'm gonna do is, as I say, I've got a booster pack there. So I'll sit you where I can see the gauges, where you can see the gauges, sorry. I will get the wires all hooked up to my booster pack. Got a good connection on the positive. Moment of truth, are my gauges going to light up or have I just wasted a morning? Woo! Superb. Okay. So the next stage is to get them all installed in the car, get everything all bolted down the way it should be, and well, hopefully, it's, as you can see, the volt gauge is telling me, well, the boost gauge is telling me zero, which you would hope. The volt gauge is telling me just above 13 volts. The clock's swaying a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. The clock's swaying a bit back and forth, but I'm going to assume it's because I don't have a good connection on the, the red terminal just now. I really hope so, anyway. Uh, but I'll be back soon once we're back out in the car and ready to put everything back together. Hello, back again, out in the car. Um, try to put everything back together. I've already fed the vacuum hose up and I've started feeding the wires down because it's all stuff that I wanted to test fit it before I started filming. Um, so again, I will set you somewhere and we'll crack on from there. you there you'll be able to see roughly what I'm doing just now. What I'm doing is, as I say, I've run the ground wire down to here, round behind the unit, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that when we come to it. I've got the power wire here. It's run through, and I'm going to run it down behind the post here, exactly where I've run the vacuum line. So this bit, again, underneath the steering wheel, I'll bump the steering wheel up as far as it will go this time, and I'll bump that down, and I'll run my, my power wire, if I can feel where my vacuum hose is, for the boost gauge. I'll stick my fingers in. not too hard to, to find space to get through from the centre console to the to the main bit here. It's where all the kind of wires and everything run anyway, the power wires for different things, so it's kind of, you get the impression where stuff's meant to run. Uh, okay, and again run it round the back and out where the fuses go. Throw a wee bit more of that wire through. As I say, I'll, need to I'll feed all this through into the dash anyway. Uh, it's all nicely insulated, so there'll be no chance of it getting in the road or annoying anything else. Okay, so as you can see there, the first thing I'm going to do is ground it. And I'm grounding C in there. There's a hole there, which is just a convenient size for this here screw. So again, I'll angle the camera down a wee bit. You might not be able to see too much of what I'm doing, but trust me, all I'm doing is screwing in a wee screw 
with a ground wire attached to it. I don't know why, but normally this is a great wee place to, to set you, but today it's not playing ball. There we go, that's better. And as I say, I'll angle you down so you can at least get an impression of what I'm doing. Uh, again, just the Phillips head screw. Doesn't really matter. Well, actually, yeah, it does matter. Sorry, I was going to say it doesn't matter this one's self tapping, but it really does because it needs to be self tapping to go through that hole. And as I say, it needs a good solid ground, and this is probably the best you're going to get under here. I've seen folk use it on the, the radio screws, but my radio screws are painted, so that wouldn't work. Okay, so run the screw through there. Make sure it's going in straight and it should, say so should, cut its own thread. There we go. Nice. And that should be my... Yeah, there we go. That's that all nice and grounded. Hopefully that'll... That'll work. I need to move, make sure these are out the road of the fan, so it'll the vents, so it'll actually go back in. That's always important. So that's the ground sorted. As I say, I'll show you again. It's just screwed in to what was quite a convenient wee hole in there, uh, and that should do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can find somewhere to put you down that you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Pointing you can just can you see what I'm doing there? Yeah. Okay. Once again, I've got my crimp connector here. Now the big question is. Where did I set my fuse tap if it was working with it a minute ago? Give me two seconds. Which would be a real shame because it's kind of important. Okay, so I've got the fuse adapter here. Now the fuse I'm using this time is number four, which is again, I think it's just under the one I used before, that one there, which is the if you look on here. It is the overhead console and the radio, so again, only comes on when the key is on because you don't want your gauges running all the time draining your battery. Especially since one of them is a voltage gauge, all it would be doing is telling you, by the way, I'm draining your battery all day, every day. So plug the fuse in, get the wire down. Stink it, stick it, stink it, and stick it into the crimp connector. Get again my crimping tool into there. Stick it in there and crimp it nice and tight. Because what you want is a nice, good electrical connection. That looks good to me. And then that, as I say, plugs into the fuse immediately below. The one I used just to put it the other. Can't remember exactly when it was. I don't know when this video will be going out, but there we go. So that's technically it all in and grounded. So if I turn the key on, the gauges should light up. And they do. Which is ideal. Okay. I'll 
I'll bring you in and show you. There you go. That's what they look like. My clock, my boost gauge, and my voltmeter. Now, as I say, obviously still a lot of tidying up to do, um, so I'll take you through that, but I'm absolutely delighted. Now, the next thing I need to do, if I've got something that will allow me to do it, is set the time on the boost, on the clock. Now, again, what I will do is, if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description to where I got all these gauges from. Uh, it's a place called eBay. Um, but no, in, in all honesty, I'm really, really happy with the quality of these gauges and how quickly they came. Now, I could really do like a precision screwdriver or something, but it's not something I keep with me all that often, to be honest with you. But I, what I do have is the Allen key for when I changed my. Uh, Eight, four, five. Right, six, seven, eight, nine, because I wasted so much time. Okay, okay, there we go. And that's us ready to go. I'll go and get a couple of bits and pieces just to lock this in. I'll be back in two seconds. Uh, they spot the deliberate mistake. The red wire for the clock needs to be hooked into constant power, not a. Uh, what's the word? not a key on system because otherwise it doesn't hold the time. So what I ended up having to do was run another wire through the dash, you can see under there, and it's getting worse and worse, into the battery socket. Uh. So now what I'm doing is just putting everything back together. Everything works, the clock's all set, so yeah, we should be all good. I'm going to put you back and I'm going to try and put this dash back together and hopefully that's us. The only other thing I need to do, obviously, before I do anything else, is pull the boost hose through and attach it onto that little bit of the boost gauge. Then make sure everything, you don't want too much, you don't want too many holes, you don't want too much hose sticking through, you don't want wires being left under there either. So what I'm doing is just pushing everything through the little hole that I cut out later on. Because I say you don't want anything to be left. Particularly because the hose is so thick. Yeah, everybody knows hose is thick. Um, yep, that looks good to me. That look good to you? Looks good to me. So now I can get the screws out and finally screw this pod down. So as I say, self-tapping screws straight in. Phillips head screwdriver. But it's too big. <laughs> on. Smaller Phillips head screwdriver. Probably still a bit too big, but it'll do. Okay. 
not much to watch here guys so what I'll do is I'll bring you back once I've got these all screwed down okay okay so here we are all back again I've got it all screwed down it's now just a case of getting the dashboard and everything put back together again I'm obviously a bit concerned that these wires are going to get pinched same with the the vacuum line going to get pinched when I put everything back on but we can but wait and see I know other people have used this uh, set up and they've been all right so next thing is putting the stereo back in again it was only really out to allow me to get access to that hole I was using as a ground so here we go start the screw off Now hopefully this is the last time for a little while I'll need the dashboard out of this thing. Uh, I don't have anything planned at the moment that I need to take the dash out for. Right. So, so that's done the LED bulbs. We've done gauges and one other thing that at the moment is remaining nameless Now, again, before I put the final bits and pieces together, just to show you. Mm. Everyone works, but it's currently only showing at about 10.5 volts, so that's not good. Probably because I've had the doors open and I've been testing lights and everything like that and it's not been a proper run in a few days. Uh, hopefully I'll take care of that soon. Okay, so I'll put you back down and we'll start putting everything else back together. Again, as I say, I've already screwed the dash back in. Next bit is the pillar pod. Make sure you line up. If you line up the, the holes that it's supposed to click into, everything else more or less lines itself up and it's just a case of palm power and it holds the dash down as well there you go that's better yeah that, that holds the dash in now this is the bit I was a bit nervous about so we'll see how this works because obviously now I've got all this extra stuff in the way Looks okay. Yep. Nothing's immediately causing a problem. Just make sure everything still lights up. Yep. Okay, so no issues there that I can see. There we go. Window switch. Back in. Red tab down. Put it in. Here's control knobs. In. And that is us all done, all back together. There's only one more thing I need to do, and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to do it. Two seconds. Okay, so the final thing I need to do is to 
fit this vacuum hose so the boost gauge gets how much vacuum's coming. So what I'm tapping into is the line for the EGR valve. Now it just pulls off, so I can put my T fitting in, put my fitting on, but I will need to cut another little bit of that off just to run it in. So I'll bring you back once I've done that, and it's far easier to explain, and there's no way I can set you that you'll really be able to see. So give me two minutes. There we go. That's the boost gauge all hooked in. All the wires are tidied up around the back of the engine bay. So now, over. So I'm done under here for the next little while. We'll go inside and I'll start it up just to make sure that the boost gauge is working. And there we go. So that's good for a charging circuit. And no, the boost gauge is not working. Hmm. Right, I'll let you find out where I need to tee into because that apparently is not the right place to tee the boost gauge into. But the other ones are working okay. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll get back to you soon. Sorry about the darkness. Uh, just to do a quick recap, I've had her out a few times uh, over the course of the day just to test her out. Uh, the boost gauge works fine, it just doesn't work at idle. Uh, there was a problem with the clock as well, you may have noticed it wasn't holding the time. I was setting the time and it was defaulting back to, I think it was 3.17 which was the first time I'd set. That was because the factory instructions told me to hook the red wire up to constant power and the yellow wire up to the key on that's the wrong way around so basically I had to cut wires and snip wires and take it back out and rebuild everything again I didn't see the point in it it just had been rehashing stuff we'd already done but everything works absolutely perfectly now as I will show you there you go you can see it's pretty late on uh, you see the boost gauge doesn't work when obviously when the engine's not on, but it doesn't work at uh, uh, idle either. You need to actually be moving. Any boost. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so it's all working, it's all good, and I'll see you soon for the next update.